Hello class, this is Demetrius Wilson. This is Business One and we are now on Chapter 7 and we're speaking about management and leadership. Great topics uh, to be uh, referring to. Uh, learning objectives. Describe the changes occurring today in the management functions. Describe the four functions of management, which we've already discussed a few times. Relate the planning process and decision making uh, to the accomplishment of company goals. Describe the organizing function of management. Explain the differences between leaders and managers and describe the various uh, leadership styles. And then lastly, but not least, uh, summarize the five steps of the control function of management. Uh, as always, we have our lovely story at the very beginning. So I want you to check out uh, Cheryl Sandberg. She's a COO or Chief Operating Officer of Facebook. Uh, wants to change uh, women's roles in business and led Facebook uh, to profitability. Uh, so check that out. Uh, you know, it's not just Mark Zuckerberg uh, as an individual that's uh, doing every single thing. And then Facebook, there are other people uh, behind the organization. Uh, be sure to go over name that company. Check that out. Uh, know that managers' roles are evolving. Uh, you know, they're asking managers to do a lot more these days, asking them to do a lot of uh, different things than they've done in the past. Uh, you know, so a lot of times you, you'll find managers that need to be able to speak with people, interact with individuals, and those uh, soft skills or those interpersonal skills come in really handy. Uh, so management. Management is the process used to accomplish organizational goals through planning, organizing, leading, and controlling people and other organizational resources, right? So those are the main components of management, uh, as you see uh, right below uh, planning, leading, organizing, and controlling. Uh, so I want you to go ahead and focus on uh, reviewing these four because they're things that are not only important to uh, your quiz and your test, but they're also important to uh, management uh, that either you're currently in or will be in uh, someday in the future. Uh, so read through all the bullet points under planning, leading, organizing, and controlling. Uh, you know, so for instance, planning, you want to set organizational goals because you're planning to hit those goals. Leading, uh, you want to give assignments, lead uh, them to uh, the direction that you want them to go. Organizing, allocate resources, assigning tasks, you want to assign certain things, organize things this way, that way. And controlling is when you want to set those measures and say, you didn't do this and now this is what I'm going to have to do uh, in order to get you to uh, get the type of results that we need. Like you didn't hit your sales goal. Uh, so we're going to put you on a written warning and say, if you don't hit your sales goals three months in a row, then we're going to kind of let you go. Uh, be sure to read these very carefully. Uh, I'll read over planning, read over organizing, read over leading, and read over controlling. Uh, actually, let me go back so I can go through the definition of, uh, of planning for that. Uh, but make sure that you go over those. They are uh, key components of management. Uh, so we'll start with planning. Uh, a management function that includes anticipating trends and determining the best strategies and tactics to achieve organizational goals and objectives. Right, so you want to uh, anticipate trends. I know you don't have a crystal ball and you can't necessarily always predict the future, but you want to try your best to anticipate those trends and then act accordingly. Organizing is a management function that includes designing the structure of the organization and creating conditions and systems in which everyone and everything work together, right? Want to organize things uh, so we all work interactively to get the best results. Leading, creating a vision uh, for the organization and guiding, training, coaching, and motivating others to work effectively achieve the and achieve the organizational goals and objectives, right? So I want to lead you to do the appropriate things so that you meet so I can meet my goals and the company can meet their goals. All of them are intertwined and interconnected. Uh, be sure, as always, to go through your test prep and uh, be prepared for those great quizzes that I know you love so much. Uh, controlling is a management function that involves establishing clear standards to determine whether or not an organization is processing or uh, progressing towards its goals and objectives, uh, rewarding people for doing a good job and taking corrective action if they're not, right? So if you do a good job, great, a reward's coming your way. If you're not doing a good job, then, you know, uh, can't call it a punishment, whatever, uh, but something to tell you that, hey, you're not doing it the right way. This is what I need for you to do. Uh, vision and mission, they're, they're uh, typically connected. Uh, a lot of times you'll see a company's mission statement posted all over the company. Uh, vision is encompassing uh, explanation of why the organization exists and where it's uh, trying to head. All right. So why do you exist? We exist to uh, to have the, the best search engine. We exist in order to give people search engine options, if it was Google. 
a mission statement is an outline of the fundamental purposes of an organization, right? So what's our fundamental purpose? Uh, to, you know, do certain things about profit, help the, our stakeholders, everybody who touches the company, uh, things of that nature. Uh, so a mission statement should do a few things. It should address the organization's self-concept, philosophy, long-term survival needs, uh, customer needs, social responsibility, and the nature of the product or service. Uh, so I always talk about goals and objectives, and goals are long to a little bit more long-term. Objectives are shorter. Uh, they're like sprints. Uh, so a goal is the broad long-term accomplishments an organization wishes to attain. Objective is specific short-term statements detailing how to achieve the organization goals. So you have a bunch of objectives that lead up to a goal and the goals that lead up to the vision and the mission. A SWOT analysis, a planning tool used to analyze an organization's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And a SWOT analysis is great. You can use a SWOT analysis on yourself, on a company, on a restaurant, whatever you want to use it on. Uh, but it, it works great uh, just to, you know, to, to draw those four boxes and, and say this is what we're going to put in them. So strengths, uh, core competencies and key areas are the things they're good at. Weaknesses, no clear strategic direction, obsolete facilities, so things you're bad at. Uh, and are we going to improve or are we just going to avoid those weaknesses? Opportunities, ability to serve additional customer groups, expand product lines. So this is how we could possibly make more money. Um, and potential external threats, entry uh, out of, of lower cost foreign competitors, right? So competitors coming in, still in our slice of the pie. Uh, those are threats that are going to take away our market share. Uh, strategic planning is a process of determining the major goals and organization uh, and the policies and strategies for obtaining and using resources to achieve those goals. So basically, how you strategically plan to set your organization up to be successful. Uh, tactical. Uh, this is the process of developing detailed short-term statements about what is to be done, who is to do it, and how it is to be done, right? So strategic, uh, more or you, like when they say you're looking at things from a 10,000 foot view, you're looking from higher up. Tactical, that, that's more of your, a more of your uh, closer to your day to day, and then you go down further down to operational planning. And operational planning is a process of setting work uh, standards and schedules uh, necessary to implement the company's tactical objectives. Right. So uh, I need John, Bob, and Scott. Uh, to work these shifts. That's my operational planning. And my tactical planning is I have John, Bob, and Scott to work these shifts in order to get this much inventory completed by this time, right? So operational leads up to tactical, and tactical leads back up to strategic planning. Uh, and the higher you get up, the higher the person is. So a VP may be doing the strategic planning, uh, the, the manager may be doing tactical, and maybe the supervisor and his team are doing the operational planning. Uh, so if you look right here, these are four boxes you could definitely should definitely review. Strategic planning, setting a broad, long-range goals by top managers, right? So these are top managers. Tactic it goes here to tactical planning, uh, the identification of specific short-range objectives by uh, by lower-level managers. Then you get down here to operational planning, the setting of work schedule uh, and standards. And then contingency plan, that means just your backup. And anytime you hear the word contingency, that means your backup or your backup plan. Uh, backup plans in case primary plans uh, fail or they fall through. Uh, so by definition, contingency planning is a process of preparing alternative courses of action that may be used in primary plans. Don't achieve the organization's objectives, right? Uh, you know, so if you, if you run into uh, you know, a little bit of a snag, you need to go to that contingency plan. Uh, decision making is choosing among two or more alternatives, right? So here are the D's of decision making. You want to define this, the situation. And you can use this in your personal life, professional life, scholastic life. Define the situation. Describe and collect needed information. Develop alternatives. Describe which alternatives are best. Do what is indicated by implementing. And uh, determine whether the decision was a good one. And then follow up. If it's not a good one, then you know not to do it again. If it is a good one, then maybe you repeat. Uh, problem solving is a process of solving the everyday problems that occur. Problem solving is less formal than decision making and usually calls for quicker action. You have to be on top of things, do things one, two, three, four, because uh, it requires immediate action. Uh, brainstorming is uh, coming up with as many solutions to the problem as possible in a short period of time with no censoring. So the no censoring part means, Demetrius, you can't exclude my stupid idea. You can't say, Demetrius, that's just a dumb idea. Can't put it on the board. You put everything on the board, and then in the second round, when you go ahead and you eliminate the dumb ideas, then you, you take my idea off of the board. Uh, so um, brainstorming is very, very effective. Uh, use that in a lot of organizations uh, that I've been in, and uh, it, it's really effective to come up with great ideas. Uh, more test prep. Be sure to ask yourself those questions. 
uh, and continue to grow your brain. Uh, top management, so you see things like top management, upper management, uh, the highest level of management consisting of the president and other uh, company executives who uh, develop strategic plans. So remember, strategic is, is those, those upper uh, management people, then goes down to tactical, then goes down to operational uh, planning. Uh, and here's our top management, so president, vice president, middle management, plant manager, division head, branch managers, supervisory or first line managers, is supervisor, foreman, department head, section leaders, non-supervisory is everybody else. Those are the employees. Uh, and no matter where you are, you know, you fit in as an integral part of that pyramid. Um, so be sure to go over those. Uh, you know, we went over them, but I want you to reread the definition in case that's one of the quizzes on there. So reread what uh, middle management is and who they are and also supervisory management as well. Uh, now, these skills right here, I will stop to go over because they are very important. Uh, technical skills, these are skills that involve the ability to perform tasks in specific discipline or department. So uh, if all of your people and your manager do one, two, three, then you need to know how to do one, two, three. Those are the technical skills. Uh, human relations skills are skills that involve communication and motivation. They enable managers to work through and with people. Uh, human relations skills, I know how to talk to people, know how to work with people, know when it's time to uh, you know, have, you know, be comforting and know when it's time to kind of say, hey, this is, you know, a little bit of go time. Uh, you know, you have to have those skills to work with individuals. Uh, conceptual skills, skills that involve the ability to picture the organization as a whole and, and the relationships among its various parts, right? So you see things as a whole, uh, as opposed to just looking at through it, a, a little small lens that you see in terms of what you do as, as your, your business functions. Um, and these are the skills that are needed at various uh, levels of management. I want you to take some time. There's more time than I'm going to take right now. But I want you to take some time to be sure to review this. So if you look at it, top managers, they don't really need to have a lot of technical skills. They need to have human relations skills to get along with people, but they need a lot. Most of what they need is conceptual skills. Middle, middle managers, you see it's all kind of even, right? If you're a middle manager, you know, you know the feeling that you kind of have to be, you know, uh, good at everything, wear a lot of hats. Technical skills, human relations skills, and conceptual skills are pretty much even. And if you're a first line manager, you have to have those technical skills in, in bulk. And then human relations skills, you have to have those two conceptual skills, not as much, because they're really not looking for that from you. They have the middle managers and the top managers to, to do the uh, what they may call the big thinking. Uh, back to school for top managers. Be sure to read that. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely uh, be a helpful article for you. Uh, staffing is a management function that includes hiring, motivating, and retaining of the best people available to accomplish the company's goals. Um, oops, sorry about that. Right, so you want to staff an organization appropriately. I don't want 50 people if I only need 30 people working. And I don't want 20 people if I need 30 people working. I want to see if I can get the, the exact fit. Now, do we always get the exact fit? No, because there are ebbs and flows of businesses that go up and down. Uh, but you have to try and get as close as you can get. Uh, transparency is a presentation of a company's facts and figures in a way that are clear and apparent to its stakeholders, right? Uh, so not stockholders, but stakeholders. It's clear what the company is doing to everybody who works there, uh, to their family members, also to the shareholders because they're stakeholders as well. Um, talk about leaders. Leaders must communicate. They must establish corporate values, promote corporate ethics, embrace change, stress accountability and responsibility. I want you guys to read over those, but those are a few things that leaders, uh, you know, should specifically do. Uh, why, what did you, what do you tell the team, right? So you want to look at this making ethical decisions uh, might be a decision that some of you guys have had to make in the past. Uh, now let's talk about leadership styles because there are different types of leaders, and some people can be. Uh, the autocratic leader sometime and a democratic leader sometime and a, a you know free reign leader other times but most times you see people who are specifically one type of leader autocratic leadership means making manager decisions without consulting others like you know what I don't need your opinion I've been here long enough I'm gonna make the decision you just need to go ahead and uh, enroll with it that's an autocratic leader uh, a participative leader uh, this involves uh, this individual involves managers, employees working together to make decisions. Right. So we're all going to get together. We're going to be it's going to be democratic and, and we're going to work on making decisions. Everybody's going to be involved. You get a lot more buy in when you do it that way. And in free reign leadership, managers set objectives and employees are free to do whatever is appropriate to accomplish those objectives. So whatever you need to get done, a lot of times you'll see that in sales, whatever, <clears throat> whatever you need to get done, go do it as long as you come back, because it is a uh, uh, 
uh, results-based business. <clears throat> Empowering workers, so that just means, hey, giving people some responsibility, some power to make some decisions, and you, you'd be surprised at the things that they'll uh, they'll be able to do. They may they may just surprise you. Um, so enabling that goes along with uh, empowering. Uh, so giving workers the education tools they need to make decisions. Uh, Want to make sure that you you have people involved. You have them doing things that's not so mundane that it's just one, two, three, four throughout the entire day, throughout the entire week, throughout the entire month, throughout the entire year. Uh, knowledge management is finding the right information, keeping the information in a readily accessible place, and making the information known to everyone in the firm. So we find the right information, we put it there, have our people give our people access to it, and things are great and rosy as we go throughout our business function. And you know, not to say that it's right the first time. Maybe we go back and we refine it a little bit. Uh, using social media uh, during the worst times, the worst of times. So I want you to read that. Uh, so everybody's so so far into. Uh, social media these days and, and not just people but companies as well uh, controlling want to make sure things work uh, so controlling consists of five steps you want to establish clear performance standards right so that's the first thing you want to do you want to make sure that they're clear these are things that I need for you to do uh, you want to monitor and record actual performance or results compare results against plans and standards uh, communicate results and deviations to the appropriate uh, employees right so if they're deviations we need to tell you what they are and expect that you uh, uh, that you fix them and then five take corrective action when needed and providing uh, positive feedback uh, for work for work well done right so don't just tell people just when they do bad also talk to them when they do good you know do good high five right if you're not a high five or send an email that says high five uh, and this is the you know the control process that shows you uh, how, how it works and how it flows right there. So if it takes corrective action, if it needed to take corrective action, here's the feedback. Are the standards realistic? And you go back here. If they're not realistic, then you go back and you establish new standards uh, because uh, without realistic standards, we talk about like with SMART goals, uh, it's not something that the employees are going to get done. So why are you setting the standards there? Uh, <clears throat> So we'll go through there. Internal, external customers. I'll let you read through the definitions, but the skinny of it is, is that internal customer is somebody who works with you, right? Uh, I work in customer service. Somebody else works in claims. That's my internal customer and vice versa. Uh, but an external customer is somebody who gives your company money for a good or for a service. Uh, so, you know, external people, sometimes people are nice to external uh, and not so nice to internal, but you need to be nice and good to, to both. Uh, and test prep more of those questions there. Be sure to review them. They will help you out. And lo and behold, we're here to our summary. Uh, be sure to go through the entire summary. Uh, get some good tips from the from the textbook that'll help you uh, on the quizzes, help you on the test, help you on your discussion uh, a board post as well. Uh, so that's chapter seven in a nutshell. Next up will be chapter eight, and we'll be moving right along uh, throughout the textbook. So as always, uh, have a good day and a great week.